there and welcome to Andy Ford's Comedy Heroes. This is a series all about the people that influenced and inspired me as I was growing up. The people I saw on the telly, basically, when I was a young lad in the 60s and 70s. Uh, the lady we're talking about today is uh, or was an American comedian called Phyllis Diller. Real name Phyllis Driver. She was born in Lima, Ohio. And she was outrageous. I mean, her hair was all over the place. I mean, basically, she was one of the first comedy characters. And she told gags brilliantly, just brilliant delivery, but all done with an attitude. And the attitude worked with the characters she created. The hair was all over the place. The costumes were outlandish. She'd wear clothes. If it's all right to say that a lady her age perhaps wouldn't be seen wearing normally. She was just, you know, off the chart with all that. But as I say, great comedian. Delivery was awesome. She was politically incorrect before anyone knew what political correctness was. I mean, she, she was outrageous. But to be fair, she spread it out. I mean, she took about fat people, thin people. Her husband, she called Fang. Uh, she hated him comedically. Uh, but she was also self-deprecating about her own cooking and stuff like that, and, you know, and, and her sex life and stuff. It was brilliant. And I think this lady opened the door for people like Joan Rivers to come through. I'm not saying Joan Rivers wouldn't have made it on her own because she was absolutely brilliant. But Phyllis Diller was there first and, and opened doors. And the other thing is, it was so rare. I think one of the reasons I remember her so much, it was so rare to see um, a comedian on television, a female comedian on TV was a very rare thing. And of course the Americans were always more outrageous. Let's see it now. The lady I love growing up. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Phyllis Diller. And now the most horrible thing that can happen to our house is on its way. His mother is coming to visit. King Kong with an overnight bag. <laughs> How can I describe her? Jello with a belt. <laughs> When the old bat sits down and takes the whole mess five minutes to settle. <laughs> when she takes her girdle off, her feet disappear. <laughs> putting a girdle on her is like putting a band-aid on a guy who had his head cut off. <laughs> Last time she bought a girdle, a U.S. rubber went up eight points. You know what it says on her bra? Wide load. <laughs> we still have a souvenir from her last visit, a Persian throw rug. She sat on the cat. <laughs> we didn't have a sunken living room till she got there. <laughs> she spent the day at Disneyland. They thought she was one of the rides. In a bikini, she looks like a bear in a jock strap. <laughs> Once a month, they shove her through the Holland Tunnel to clean it. <laughs> she laid down in our hammock and uprooted two trees. <laughs> if you get in an elevator with her, by God, you better be going down. <laughs> she got a waterbed for Christmas. You know what's in it? Lake Erie. <laughs> I swear, driving is too complicated for me, and I'll tell you why. I can only handle one thing at a time. See, I have to pull off the road to blow the horn. I can't chew gum and walk. Honest to God, I have to turn off the shower to sing. And on top of that, I got rotten luck. I swear, one day I signaled a left turn, somebody stole my watch. My whole life has been like the sixth day of a five-day deodorant pad. It stinks. If I were walking along this beautiful sandy beach and I picked up a shell to listen to the ocean, I'd get a busy signal. I couldn't get a date even when I asked. I invited a boy to the senior prom. He didn't go with me, he gave me a number to call. You ready? style of prayer. <laughs> and you know when they play spin the bottle, if they don't want to kiss you, they have to give you a quarter. Well, 
By the time I was 12 years old, I owned my own home. <laughs> and I'll tell you what made it really miserable. I had this absolutely gorgeous sister, and she had one of these sexy walks that says, to who it may concern. <laughs> well, it concerned everybody. She spent most of her life in the back seat of a car. The only time a boy ever asked me to get into the back seat was to fix the speaker. <laughs> she told me she wanted a white wedding. I told her she better pray for snow. <laughs> but here's the way it is. Fang, my husband Fang, only has one relative that I can stand at all, and that's his sister. She's skinny and she's ugly, and I like her. <laughs> If it weren't for her Adam's apple, she'd have no shape at all. She staples her bras on. <laughs> well, it's a fact. She staples them on her apple. She's got a striped dress that's only got one stripe. Her knees are so bony, she can watch television and crack walnuts at the same time. When she goes to ballet class, she doesn't wear a tutu, she wears a one-one. <laughs> and when she forgets to shave her legs, it looks like two caterpillars carrying a cigarette. <laughs> She's so damn desperate, she accepts obscene phone calls, collect. <laughs> How good was that, by the way? And surprisingly, she was quite a deep thinker. She read a book when she was young called The Magic of Believing. And she said later on it was like the secret, you know, the secret. But they've uh, copied the first book, but just added God to it. The Magic of Believing. And she really studied it. Uh, and every day would teach herself, you know, her mind into thinking a positive because she was naturally shy but uh, ended up being looking the most confident person you'd ever see and a great laugh as you've just heard a fantastic laugh but she had a great philosophy of life really now, here she is in a couple of interviews and I absolutely adore the little bit at the end when she's slightly older being interviewed watch this your laugh has become your trademark that's true. That's just my natural, normal laugh. It, well, I heard in the beginning when you started laughing that some friends of yours said, look, Phyllis, uh, give up that stupid laugh. <laughs> yes. Well, you get a lot of really bum advice when you're down. See, yeah. when, when you are small and beginning and you haven't made it, everybody's smarter than you are and they all want to tell you what to do and where to go, how to do it, and they're all wrong. <gasps> all wrong. If they knew what to do, they'd be doing it. But how did you know what to do? Can I listen to my own self. I mean, I knew what I was doing. After I read this book, I believed in myself. You see, if you believe in yourself, you don't follow every straw in the wind. You can't, people can't sway you. If you believe in yourself, you follow your own dream, your own path. Because you, and you have to do that, especially when you're starting. Otherwise, people will just mess you all up because they have a tendency to be negative. I told my dearest friend that I was going to become a comic, and she told me to keep my day job. chance to ask you questions. So raise your hand. We're going to have a, a staff member come over and chat with you if you have a question for Phyllis Diller. There we go, right there. In the Hi, back. I'm Cameron Esposito. Ms. Diller, how did you, you had a long career. You, Point. How did you maintain your longevity? How, how, how did you maintain your longevity? How did you continue to, to well, do stand up I, so I, long? I, oh, I'll tell you what. I think about it all the time. It's part of me. I am a, a comic. I was born a comic and, and found my fruition. And uh, I don't know what fruition is, but I found it. <laughs> and, and, and I, uh, what was the question? <laughs> how, how do you think you've been able oh, to that. do it so long? You know? I drink a lot of water mm -hmm. uh, and I, with a lot of gin. <laughs> The incredible Phyllis Diller, never to be forgotten. And you can't compare her to anyone. I mean, she is just absolutely awesome. Right, 
So, on these programs, as you know, if you started watching, uh, we finish off with a little bit of my own comedy as a homage to people I've just seen. Well, obviously, I'm nothing like Phyllis Diller, but the character I've created um, delivers gags in his way, whereas Phyllis delivered in her way. So, here I am, just reeling off gags in my style. Enjoy! So then the phone rang, look at you looking at me. Then the phone rang, what a pity those people couldn't turn up. Then the phone rang. <laughs> Must be lovely to watch me. The phone rang, and there was another friend of mine. He's a nice guy. Um, he used to be in the Navy. Or was it the Army? I get confused. And what's the difference between a sailor and a soldier? Yes, you can't dip a sailor in your egg. Well, no. <laughs> You can work these out and laugh tomorrow if you want. Now, he's got a new job. Let me just balance, balance on one leg. Now, he's got a new job. He's an alternative children's entertainer. That means he twists dogs into the shape of balloons. But he's nice. He was a little bit upset. I'm going to give you a chance to work that one out. He's a little bit upset. He said, the wife has left me for the dustman. Oh, I said, wrap up warm, we don't come till Tuesday. <laughs> then, the trouble is, ladies and gentlemen, is there a time delay in Doncaster? There's a problem. There's a lot of him going to spin. I don't think I'll ever do that again. Don't trust me, I lie, I lie. So anyway, um, I've got a lot of friends who are struggling with their marriage at this moment. I've got another friend who thinks his wife's having an affair. And I said, why do you think your wife's having an affair? He said, well, we just moved from Newcastle to London and we got the same milkman. <laughs> so... Thank you for watching Andy Ford's Comedy Heroes and I'll be back very soon with uh, another wonderful comedian for you to laugh at. See you soon. Take care, then.